my dear grade 8 students, so welcome back to our class. Again, this is your teacher, Miss Cabs, and here we are again for our new exciting episode of our science class in Science 8. And today we are going to continue our discussion about biodiversity. But of course, before we proceed to our lesson, if you are new to this channel, don't forget to subscribe like and hit the notification bell for more updates in our science class for today's objectives we have discussed the archaea and the bacteria identify and describe bacteria and explain the uses or the use of bacteria in food or drink making so we are we only have um, three objectives early studies of organisms resulted to only two classification or two kingdom classification system. So as what we had uh, mentioned in our previous discussion. But later, with the invention of the microscope and with more evidences gathered about different forms of life, various scientists proposed three to four, then five, and then later six or even eight kingdom classification. But this uh, lesson we are just going to discuss no, the the six kingdom classification that will be used no, namely the uh, archaebacteria the eubacteria protist fungi plant and animal kingdom okay so first we are going to talk about the archaebacteria Okay, so what is archaebacteria? So RK or the domain RK and this belong to Kingdom Archaebacteria has three category or three groups. So we have methanogens, the halophiles, and the thermophiles. So organisms that belong to this kingdom are all microscopic. So when we speak of microscopic meaning they are so small as to be visible only with the use of microscope. So they live in various places, no? some even in the most severe environments. So when we speak of severe environments meaning an extreme environment which is a habitat characterized by harsh environmental conditions beyond the optimal range for the development of humans so first we have uh, methanogens okay so what is methanogens do you know that uh, methanogens can survive in places where there is no oxygen so if we humans cannot survive without oxygen, our methanogens can. So some members of this group inhabit digestive tracts of the animals. And also we can also find them in the ponds where animals and humans and domestic, uh, what do you call this, uh, domestic waste are treated. Okay, so what are the examples of methanogens? So number one example of methanogens are the Methanobacterium ruminatum. So, what kind of uh, methanogen is this? So, Methanobacterium ruminatum is can be found in the cow stomach. Huh? So, as what you can see in your screen, this is a uh, this is the Methanobacterium ruminatum undergoing division. So, they are non-motile, so they are not moving, and yes, they can live without oxygen. And some members of this genus can use formate to reduce methane and others live exclusively through the reduction of carbon dioxide with hydrogen. Another example of uh, methanogens, this one, the methanospirillum hangatei. This uh, methanogens can be found from waste treatment ponds and this is about one micrometer so one micrometer is equivalent to 0 0.001 millimeter okay let's proceed methanogens are also present on bottom of lakes swamps and rice fields so dito kadalasan or dito nyo makikita talaga yung mga methanogens Okay. So, an important characteristic of this group is they can produce methane gas. 
So as you observe, kung uh, if you are living near rice fields or rice paddies and swamps, now the bubbles that pop at the water surface is methane, and um, and you can ob also observe that the uh, yung amoy niya ay I know mabaho. Na? So methane is uh, utilized as biogas. Ano ba tong biogas? This is a cheap alternative source of energy. So they uh, there are already communities and industries which obtain energy for their lighting and cooking now fuel needs from biogas technology. So just like for example if you have some uh piggeries na uh, kinokolekta nila yung dumi ng baboy tapos inilalagay nila sa isang uh, lalagyan or sa container which they can collect methane gas and they converted into uh, biogas uh, okay so next one is another example of methanogens are the halophiles h a l o p h i l e s so uh, based on the picture that you can see no um if you live in areas which make salt you observe that uh, there are orange or yellow color in the salt pads so this is due to halophiles nakita nyo yan guys so yung nag orange or yellow orange na color it is because of the halophiles uh, so these archaea bacteria are adapted to very salty environments so, akala natin wala nang mabubuhay diyan na mga organisms kasi napaka ano, napaka ano ba yung uh, salty, na? Napaka alat ng lugar na 'yan. So, uh, meron pa lang mga organisms na nanabubuhay sa ganyang klasing lugar. So, examples of the halophiles is the Halococcus dombrowski. This is an archaeon first isolated from a Permian alpine salt deposit and it is extremely halophilic coccoid. So, this uh, halophiles is a member of phylum Yarchaeota and order Halobacterialis. Another one example is the Halobacterium salinarum. It is an extremely halophilic marine obligate aerobic archaeon. So, despite its name, Halobacterium, no, this is not a bacterium, okay? but rather a member of the domain Archaea. Uh, it is found, it is also found in uh, salted fish, no, hypersaline lakes, um, sa mga maaalat na lugar. Okay? So, let's proceed. So, if you are going to read about the Dead Sea and the Great Salt Lake of Utah in USA, you can say that they have in common. So, the common thing that the Dead Sea and the Great Salt Lake has is they are having heavy water content with no fish. Bakit naman? Bakit lifeless siya? This is common among them. Why? Because they are typically rich in salt content and it has more salinity than that of ocean. So, masyadong maalat ang Dead Sea at saka Great Salt Lake kaya walang nabubuhay na isda dito. So, walang mga microorganisms na nabubuhay sa lugar na ito. So, exact halophiles na that they can survive in very, very salty area. This picture shows the examples of thermophiles, another group of um, RK bacteria. So, this group of RK bacteria can live in places with high temperature from the word thermo, thermophile. So, these areas include volcanic hot springs with temperature from 80 to 110 degrees Celsius. So, 
Can you imagine that? So they also inhabit the small deep sea openings where hot water with temperature higher than 250 degrees Celsius come out. Mm. So, akala natin wala nang mabubuhay ng mga organisms dyan kasi napakainit. So, biruin mo, 250 degree Celsius. No. So, meron pa pala, the thermophiles. The thermophiles can turn into hydrogen sulfide released from these openings to, to food for other organisms and in turn are provided essential nutrients by the former. So, Mm, they are food to the other organisms. Uh, uh, it will first turn into hydrogen sulfide and then uh, it will be a food for the other organisms and they can provide essential nutrients. Example of thermophiles is the pyrodictium occultum. So, or the PL19T. This is a member of the order Disulfurococcales. And a phylum Crinarchaeota. So, this is the first hyperthermophiles cultured in the laboratory at temperatures above the boiling point of water. And it is isolated from a shallow submarine sulfataric field near a volcano. Volcan <coughs> Volcano. Another one example is the Pyrococcus furiosus. This is also an extreme, uh, extremophilic species of Archaea, and it can be classified as a hyperthermophile because it thrives best under extremely high temperatures, so higher than those preferred of a thermophile. So, it belongs also to the order Thermococcalis and Phylum Yoriar Kiyota. Okay, so we are through with the RK bacteria. So, let's proceed to the um, bacteria domain or the kingdom Eubacteria. So, again, members of Eubacteria are unicellular and microscopic and they are referred to as the true bacteria and are usually called the bacteria group because their cell walls are made of uh, peptidoglycan, which is a carbohydrate. So what comes into your mind when you hear the word bacteria? Okay, so bacteria consist of a very diverse group. They have varied shapes and they can be found in almost all kinds of places like soil, um, water and even in the air no? some are present in raw food others live in or on other organisms including your body and you must have known that they also cause diseases and harm to other organisms but most importantly na, bacteria have a variety of uses for the environment and for humans. So, hindi lahat ng bacteria ay uh, bad. Na? Meron ding good. So, can you try to look at this picture? So, we have coxi, bacilli, and we have spirilla, the corinibacterium, the vibrius, and the spirocheti. Okay. So, can you describe each? Okay. So, they differ in their shapes, right? So, meaning to say, bacteria are classified according to their shape. So, notice that a coxi, na, singular of coxi is coccus, uh, they are differently arranged. If they can form pairs, they called as diplococci. If it is in chain, so this is strepto, streptococci. Uh, and if it is in, what you call this, in cluster, no, uh, it is called as staphylococci. So, the same man sa bacilli. No? Um, they can also occur in chains and many other forms. So, just like this one, ne, diplobacilli, pag naka-pair, no? and pag naka-chain uh, naman ay streptobacilli. Okay, let's proceed. 
So most of the time, you probably think of the diseases when bacteria, which we refer to as germ in or germs in the early grades as mentioned. So are you aware that when your oil glands you know, swell and result of pimples, they are infected with the bacterium Propionibacterium acnes? Okay, so yun yung bacteria na makikita natin sa mga pimples natin. Okay, so they could be infect infected with the bacterium Propionibacterium acnes. So a lot of human diseases are caused by bacteria. So ano-ano ba yung mga bacteria na yun miss? At ano-ano uh, ba yung mga diseases na yun? So, another disease that is caused by bacteria is the tuberculosis. This is very common disease in the Philippines. And it is caused by bacterium, mycobacterium tuberculosis. So, as you can see, uh, this one, ito yung tsura ng mycobacterium tuberculosis. Pag na... na, na if we can if we look at this in the under the microscope so it's uh the my, mycobacterium tuberculosis it will spread when a person with active tb diseases in their lungs coughs or sneezes and someone else inhales the expelled droplets which contain tb bacteria so that is why you have to cover your mouth when during you cough or you sneeze para wag na kayong makahawa pa sa iba yeah. Okay. Another one is, have you heard about the rise of leptospirosis cases in the recently flooded areas in number of places in the country? Uh, ano ba yung leptospirosis? Okay. Leptospirosis is a bacterial infection due to exposure of the spirochete bacterium. Okay. One of the example of this spirochete bacterium is the leptospira interrogans. Okay. Uh, these bacteria are present in the urine and tissues of cattle, pigs, um, horses, rats, and even, even wild animals. And it has been found out that the largest number of leptospirosa, leptospira, <laughs> leptospira bacteria are in the urine of rats. So, anybody can be infected through contact with water, soil food, and even your vegetables that are contaminated with urine of these animals. So, the bacteria no, can enter the body through cuts in the skin, or in your skin, or in your uh, in the surfaces of your eyes and nose. Okay? So, but it is important for you to know that the disease is preventable and treatable with antibiotics. Right? So, can you think of ways by which you can avoid leptospirosis? So, so, based on our discussion, so can you think of ways by which you can avoid leptospirosis? Okay, so don't forget to write your answer in our comment box. Okay, how you can avoid leptospirosis? So, since we, we all know that this disease is preventable and treatable with antibiotics. Okay? Bacteria also cause diseases in animals. The Bacillus anthracis is responsible for the disease called anthrax. Okay? Ano naman yung anthrax, miss? The bacterium is found in the soil and can survive for many years. The disease affects animals like uh, cows and carabaos but it could also be transmitted to humans so how so skin anthrax occurs in the philippines through contact with animal tissues or their products so inhalation and in intestinal anthrax caused by inhaling spores this one huh? and eating of contaminated or undercooked meat no? respectively are more deadly so you have to be careful what you are going to eat no? so please you have to really uh, cook your meat well 
So it is strongly advised to refrain from eating meat of dead animals suspected to have died of anthrax. So paano namin malalaman na ano siya miss? May anthrax yun. So makikita mo dito sa picture natin that the cow had a bloated stomach no? at saka nagdurugo din yung kanyang ilong. So meaning to say they are already or they can they could be suspected na may anthrax sila anthrax okay pag ang tao naman ay uh, infected with anthrax so ito yung mangyayari sa kanila okay yan so parang may uh, butas magbubutas-butas yung uh, ano mo skin so uh, in the early 2000s there was a worldwide threat of using anthrax spores to kill people in what is termed as biological warfare. So, anthrax is more common in developing countries and countries that do not have veterinary public health programs uh, that routinely vaccinate animals against anthrax. Uh, amun, yun yung mga, uh, ito yung question natin. So, who do you think are the people who are likely to be infected with anthrax? Okay. So, na-mention ko na kanina. No? Comment guys your answer in our comment box. Para makita ko naman na may participation kayo during sa uh, discussion natin. So, antibiotics are substances that kill or inhibit disease-causing organisms. Pag sinabi natin antibiotics, no? antibacterial. And so, they are substances that could kill or inhibit disease-causing organisms. So, pag may bad bacteria, meron ding good bacteria. So, and you know that in antibiotics is from a bacteria also. But anong klaseng bacteria to? They are also good bacteria. And one of the example of that is the Streptomyces gracius. Okay. So, streptomycin is an antibiotic used to treat tuberculosis and certain types of pneumonia and that is made by streptomyces griseus. Another example is the streptomyces venezuelae. So, it produces chloramphenicol which is used in killing bacteria that causes uh, typhoid fever and skin infections. Are you familiar with this, guys? The Escherichia coli. Uh, they could also call the, this as Escherichia coli. Escherichia coli. So, most E. coli, or e. coli are harmless and actually uh, important part of a healthy human intestinal tract. It feeds on partially digested food moving from the stomach to small intestines. And this bacteria, meanwhile, provide much needed vitamin B12 that otherwise uh, the human body cannot produce. But, however, no, however, meron po tayong however. However, once yung E. coli are present in other areas of your body, they can produce poisoning no? or they can poison your body causing diarrhea or kidney damage and even death. So, naku, paano ba yan makukuha or paano natin makukuha yung E. coli, miss? So, you can get an E. coli infection by coming into contact with the feces or stool of humans or animals. So, this can happen when you drink water or eat food that has been contaminated by feces. So, that is why it is very, very important that we have to wash our hands before no? before you eat, no? after you uh, use the CR. Yan. So, napakahalaga talaga ng maghugas talaga ng kamay. Kasi, yung kamay natin ay punong-puno ng mga bakteriya. Kasi, maski uh, sansana lang tayo na humahawak. 
no? Kahit ano yung, hindi, kung minsan hindi tayo aware kung ano yung mga nahahawakan natin. So, that is why we have to wash our hands. Okay? Next. Okay, do you know that many of these bacteria are also involved in making some of the foods or a drink you like? Yeah! Yes! Some bacteria convert cheap materials into useful products such as food. So, examples are the Lactobacillus bulgaricus and the, excuse me, the Streptococcus thermophilus. Uh, ano ba to, miss? Okay. Lactobacillus bulgaricus and Streptococcus thermophilus are of the lactic acid group. So, they are specifically involved in making sour milk or yogurt. Oh, sino ba dito mahilig sa yogurt? Na? Yogurt is made by adding a culture of Lactobacillus bulgaricus present in the starter to skimmed milk powder. And then, the lactase in the bacteria, lactase enzyme in the bacteria, changes the milk sugar into lactic acid. So, when this occurs, proteins in milk curdle and which gives you yogurt, it's semi-liquid texture. Okay. So, ah, ganun pala. No? So, meaning, yung mga yogurt nyo ay made up of bacteria. Good bacteria. Now, let's proceed. Have you heard about oil-eating bacteria? Okay, some members of you bacteria are able to break down or remove pollutants through the process called bioremediation. So, scientists at University of the Philippines, Diliman's Molecular Microbiology Laboratory, uh, have identified a number of bacteria which can help solve the problem of oil spills in oceans and seas through this technology, the bioremediation. And ano ba yung mga ginagamit nila? So, the oil-eating bacteria are, no, they are the Pseudomonas aeruginosa, the Acenitobacter baumani, the Penibacillus thiaminolyticus, the Bordetella bronchiseptica, and the Lysinibacillus sphericus. So, yun yung mga bacteria na ginamit ng mga scientists to help clean no, oil spills or contaminated groundwater. Uh, napakaganda talaga ng or napakaganda talaga ng creation ni God kay even no ang mga maliliit na bagay ay may mga uh, silbi din Ayan. so try to imagine kung wala ito yung mga wala tong mga bakterya na to so anong mangyayari di ba okay so next another group of bacteria guys is the cyanobacteria no, from the word cyan. Ano ba yun? Okay, so cyanobacteria is commonly known as blue-green algae, but they are not truly eukaryotic algae. Uh, um, they are bacteria. So, they are plant-like because they have chlorophyll-containing cells. Kung makikita natin yung mga cyanobacteria, akala natin na mga algae sila, but they are not. They are bacteria. So, most of them are single cell or unicellular. No? Some may form filaments and while others form spores. So, cyanobacteria can grow in ditches, no? esteros, or in moist places no? like gardens and sidewalls where light is present. So, examples of cyanobacteria are the lingbia. So, if you could see, no? makikita nyo, parang... Hindi naman yan bacteria, miss. No? Parang, ano naman yan, plants. Okay? Parang algae. O, oh, algae nga siya. Blue-green algae. But, this is a bacteria lingbia. Another one is the microcolius. Next is the oscillatoria. Next is the nostoc. Nostoc, guys. Ito yung mga kinakain ng mga uh, uh, tao no? somewhere in northern Luzon. So, the people there eat raw uh, nostok or they call it tab-tab no? as their salad. So, masarap siguro tong ano, 
tab tab na another is the um, spirulina their cells are rich in protein thus have been grown to produce single cell protein or the scp and it is used as swine and cattle feed and is also recommended as food for humans okay so next okay so another example of cyanobacterium is the anabene azulei now this is a cyanobacteria which is important in agriculture why because it converts nitrogen and air into compounds usable by plants for growth and development so the same is being done by the rhizobium group of bacteria which is present in the root nodules of legume so that is why other farmers no, usually plant their crops together with uh, what do you call this with the legumes because legumes usually had the I know, rhizobium group of bacteria which can or, or which have the ability to take atmospheric nitrogen and convert it into a uh, syllable form which they could help for the growth and development of the plants so another certain bacteria is among yung mga ginagamit din ng mga farmers is the bacillus thuringiensis now they have been developed in it into a microbial pesticide it uh, it is used to control pests and insects carrying disease causing organisms okay so i think that's all for this for this lesson dito na kami nagtapos kanina guys so we will have to continue our discussion about uh, next naman is protist na uh, fungi um, animals and animals okay okay so if you have some questions or clarifications do not forget to pm me or you can put your questions in our comment box okay so i hope that you learned new today and thank you so much for listening so take care and uh, god bless everyone bye